Oh no, you have an amplifier alarm. How do you troubleshoot it? Because you don't want to have two burned amplifiers. I'm the CNC repairman. When you're just in the belt, I'm gonna show you how the Niagara Falls pulls off. It's a little tricky to correctly troubleshoot an amplifier alarm. What type of alarm you have affects whether you need to go to the back of the machine, pull the wires out, ohm everything out, or if you could just do what they call swapping an amplifier. If you swap an amplifier on a bad motor or cable, you'll blow it up, ba-boom. Then you do it again, boom. I've had a customer do it three times. He didn't understand how to measure the resistance of the motor and he had a shorted cable. Another customer who had a bad vector drive, it kept blowing amplifiers whenever it would stop the spindle and it would blow the MOV right off the board. So how do you correctly troubleshoot an amplifier? It depends on the alarm that you're having. If you can hit reset on your machine, start the machine, zero return it, and run it again, you probably don't have a shorted motor or cable. But if you have an alarm like amplifier ground fault, motor fault, over temp, over current, short circuit, overload, amplifier current too large, you need to go to the back of the machine, turn it off, and I'm gonna show you how to measure and confirm we don't have a problem on the cable or the motor. Because if we just swap an amplifier, we're gonna get the alarm on the new amp, and then we run the risk of damaging the new amplifier, because maybe the old one wasn't bad. But if we do have an issue, we run into a problem where, oh no, we're gonna burn up two and these aren't cheap. So you have an alarm, if you can hit reset, carry on, it's probably just an intermittent issue. The control circuitries on these have issues. They're running in a hot environment, they get full of gunk and coolant, the controls have problems. So you might just need to buy a new amplifier, swap it out. And if that's the case, it works some days, it doesn't, in the morning it doesn't work, you let the machine be on for 10 minutes and hit reset, you can run, or you only have the alarm in the middle of a long run program and you clear everything, cycle the power and it works. I would feel pretty confident to walk in and go, let's swap an amplifier. If we still continue to get the alarm on the new axis, then that's the issue. So swapping, here's how it goes. The amplifier in the back of your machine has a command cable, may or may not have a little power plug. If it has a power plug, you can leave that. That doesn't need to move. But if we're gonna say this is x-axis and this is z and we have a problem with x and we want to it's an intermittent problem we're confident it's not a bad motor or a cable and we want to just move the two so if we see the problem follows the amplifier we know we need to get a new amplifier you'll want to pull the command cable out of the bottom of this one the x pull the command cable out of the top of z and swap them same thing with the motor wires so you have a cable that says for your X or your Z or your Y, there's only three wires that have to do with the servo motor and a ground. You can leave the ground where it is, move the wires over. You don't have to physically move the amplifier. Now sometimes the cable is pinched in a ground clamp and you have to pull the cable off. Or like if you have a sub spindle machine, you have all these amplifiers, the cables are just not gonna reach. In that case, you do have to pull the amplifier. You need a long, like this, Phillips screwdriver to get to these plugs and you can pull them out and swap location or swap a new one in. So you've swapped the amplifier, you didn't move its physical location but you moved the cables, powered the machine back on, everything ran, your intermittent problem now happens on the new axis that you swapped it to. Okay, probably an amplifier. Let's say you swapped it, you're still getting the x-axis alarm. Well, maybe you have a ton of chips underneath it and whenever you move x-axis, it's like grinding on those chips and that's what's causing the overcurrent. Or your bearings are totally rusted and, and that's what's causing the friction. Or you have a bad cable. Now in this video, I'm just gonna talk about a quick ohm check of the cable. If you wanna do a better check, the real check is with a meg ohm meter. Now a meg ohm meter puts out high voltage, like this amplifier does. And the mega meter checks the resistance of the windings against the ground, the machine, the chassis, and it will tell you if you have coolant in your motor, if you have a cable fault, years of this cable dragging, what happens is the insulation wears through with the oil and the coolant, and now you have what they call a high voltage short. 
So this is kind of like touching each other, but it, you won't notice it with a regular ohm meter. You have to have a mega, mega ohm, high pot tester, a few different names for them. It'll put out 300 volts. I have one that puts out a thousand volts. So if you, these wires were really close and we put a thousand volts, it might jump between the two. Well, that's kind of what happens with your amplifier. And then you'll get a ground fault and you'll get an alarm maybe only when it's working really hard, but that'll happen and that'll happen. And then what'll eventually happen is these transistors, boom, will vaporize and come right off the board. And then you go, oh, well, let's swap an amplifier. The next one that goes in, ba-boom, it, it vaporized and came right off. I don't want you to do that. I want you to know how to correctly troubleshoot. Is it a bad amp or is it a bad cable or a bad motor? So we talked about swapping. That's only if you can reset the alarm and the alarm is intermittent. If you're like getting the alarm immediately on power up, you've got to go to the back of the machine. So the amplifiers, the high voltage, it's between 300 and 350, 360 volts DC. It's what they call daisy chain parallel across the bar. So to check the resistance of your amplifier to make sure, hey, did I blow an amp like this one and I don't know it? And that's why I have this alarm. And maybe I've seen amps just go bad like this, or did it go bad because of a shorted cable or motor? So you've got three, four, maybe five of these in the back of your machine. It's confusing, and, and even for me in the field, I have multiple times checked the resistance, so I have that in ohm mode, and I'm gonna check the resistance between the bottom two. And there's documentation out there, but it's kind of confusing. I wanna, I wanna make it simple for you. You might not be a electrical guru. I'm gonna check the bottom two, just like I was doing it in your machine, like you could do it. I'm seeing some resistance, five meg ohms, and it's dropping. Well, what does that mean? You, you might have never done a resistance check. I'm gonna move the leads. So now the black is on the red and the red is in the black. I've got a resistance that's now kind of climbing. That's because there's a capacitor inside of here and your voltmeter is putting on a little bit of voltage and it's charging up that capacitor and then draining it. When you have multiple amplifiers, you're charging up all of them. Those are filter capacitors. And really we should pull these wires so that the amplifier is isolated. The same thing by pulling the motor wires off. So if, if I'm back there, we're trying to say, do we have a bad amp possibly, or do we have a bad servo motor? I can check the resistance, just this one by itself. If you unscrew the screws, be careful because they can wobble and give you some funny resistance on your meter. So either tighten them back up or with your leads, kind of press hard on the back of the screw so you get a really good connection. So that's draining resistance. I would expect to see some resistance. I don't wanna see a short and I don't wanna see an open. A short meaning one ohms, five ohms, 10 ohms, and an open being OL or 100 meg ohms. That, that could be, we've blown like this, you know, that would be an open, totally blew it right up. So normal is resistance between these two either legs. Let's check them here. Um, that's two meg. That is two meg. That is two meg. What you're reading is two million ohms, two mega ohms. That's the resistance of the transistor because it's in its open state right now. And there's some feedback, what they call uh, biasing cost across the transistors. That's what you're measuring. Now, if we were to measure one that was totally shorted, this one might be open because it blew it right off. Let's see here. I have to check. That is K ohms, so thousands of ohms. So if I was to be K ohms, K ohms, let's say I was to measure this one and it's in the meg ohms, we go to the next one, it's in the K kilo ohms, thousands of ohms, well that's, th a magnitude of like 10 difference. So we know, oh, this one measures different than that one. I suspect there's a problem here. Well, why was there a problem here? Well, let's check our motor. So if we check between the three wires of our motor, that one is 0.4 ohms. It's not a short, but it's very close to a short. 0.4 ohms, 0.4 ohms. That doesn't tell me a whole lot other than the cable is connected to the motor and the motor windings are all connected. 
If I was to measure one of these and it was a dead short, 0.1 ohms or 0 ohms, like if I touched my meter leads together, 0 0.2 ohms, that could mean I've got a shorted wire or I've got a shorter shorted winding in my motor. The last check is to ground and I want to be sure that these are open to ground. Now if you measure anything to ground with your ohm meter, that's a really good indication that we need to use a mega ohm meter and check the resistance of this. Because if your ohm meter can see it, you've definitely got a short. Now it could be a short in the cable or it could be a short in the motor. Either one of those could cause an amplifier to go boom like this. So troubleshooting amplifiers. You can swap them, but don't do it if you've got a non-resettable alarm, an alarm that's like amplifier fault, or if you've never gotten this alarm before and you got it once and you cycled the power and you still get the alarm, we gotta check the motor wires to ground, the motor wires between them, the motor and the amplifier, and we've gotta separate the amplifier out from the others because if this one that we measured in the K ohms was in parallel with these, it's gonna bleed across and they're all gonna look bad. So don't be confused. You've got a couple different voltage, excuse me, ohm meter readings. You want to see high resistance there, you wanna see high resistance there, and you wanna see high resistance, there isn't the right word. You wanna see high resistance between the plus and the minus, the high voltage negative and positive. You wanna see high resistance between the three phases of the motors, and you wanna see high resistance between the three phases of the motor through the high voltage negative and positive. So that one, I'm reading 8K. I'd say that's bad. Let's see what this one is. I'm reading in the mega ohms now. So I'm happier with that reading. You have probably in your machine one or two good amplifiers and one bad amplifier. Many times I tell people take out a notepad and you can write down the resistance of lead one to lead two, lead three, lead four, and write them down and do it on all three and then compare them and then that will give you a baseline. Oh, this one measures different. If you call our office, we're gonna ask you, hey, have you megged or ohmed the motor to ground and the cable to ground? Have you checked to see if your amplifiers are shorted? What alarms do you have? These are questions we're gonna ask and so we made the whole video to help you understand how to troubleshoot them so you don't have two blown up amplifiers. If you do have a blown up amplifier or an intermittent amplifier alarm and you wanna replace it, get back to running, you can steal your fourth and put it in place. And you can also, I tell people this, don't do it forever. You could put a larger amplifier in place of a smaller one or vice versa. So say you have a 30 and you wanna run your Z or your X and they're a 45. Don't do it forever. Don't run it 100% rapid. The difference between the amplifiers is the transistors and the control circuitry that monitors how much current it puts out to the motor. So let's say you were to swap this amplifier for like a rotary table that previously had a 30 and you have a problem with your rotary table, say a short in the motor, this is gonna let you burn the motor and catch it on fire way before this one will because this will put out a lot more juice. That's the warning, but man, if you need to get a part done today, you're not using the fourth axis, you have another machine and they don't have a 45 and it was a 45, just, just use the 30, you'll be okay. We do sell, repair these amplifiers. We have them in stock. We can ship them overnight. I wanna help you get your machine going. But if you have a fourth, just swap it in there and carry on. But then when you blow that one up, oh no, you got a problem. We're all, all about helping. That's why we make these videos. I hope this made sense to you. I know it's quick and it's confusing and there's voltage measurements and ohm readings and different amplifiers, but just don't, don't blow up your amplifier. Call us first, send us a picture. Our whole website is designed to help you. You can send us pictures quite easily. So thanks for watching and uh, be careful running your machine, especially in the back, you have high voltage. If you're really scared about doing this, hire a local tech. He's gonna come in and have experience doing that. But if you're willing, you have a voltmeter and you're gung-ho, you can learn all of this. So good luck and I wish you the best.